here in the wild, vast reaches of space, missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. Space Patrol is presented by Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa in the bright red can and those terrific Nestle's chocolate bars. Stand by for exciting action on the theft of the rocket cockpit in just one moment. Space Patrollers, you're about to witness the unveiling of a top secret, a scientific marvel that will take you through all space and time, the rocket cockpit. It's an exact scale model of the cockpit of the new XRC, and it's for you. That's right, gang. You can have a rocket cockpit. You can set it to controls just the way I do aboard the XRC. All you do, you just set your time computer for star drive and whiz through time, and then advance your throttles, and you exceed the speed of light. Send and receive secret messages with the master codes, and fire the deadly atomic cannons at enemy ships. Look through the view scope and imagine yourself whizzing through time and space, up, up, 40, 50, 100,000 miles an hour, past the moon. Above Mars. Through the millions of stars in the rings of Saturn, always protected by your powerful atomic cannons. That's right, gang, and say, this model is a real beauty, and it makes a sensational trainer with all the scientifically scaled modern parts. Every one of you space patrollers will want one, so you can fly along with us. Or dream up your own exciting missions. We want every boy and girl to have the thrill of owning this rocket cockpit. So get a pencil and paper. In a few minutes, we'll tell you how to get yours. sound effects and with the ship tilted into a dive like that, it felt like I really cracked. Yeah, that's all right, Happy. Carol's going to get her turn later. You mean I have to learn to fly, too? Mm -hmm. All pilots have to be checked out in the trainer before they fly the XRC. The X stands for experimental, RC stands for rocket ship. Take rocket a matter. cockpit. I was going to ask you about that. Y you call this a, a rocket cockpit, but isn't the XRC actually a time drive ship? A uh, top secret time drive ship, Happy. And by calling it a rocket cockpit, it'll remain secret a lot longer. Up till now, my ship was the only one equipped with a time drive. And now when the XRC gets into production, every man in the space patrol will have a ship capable of exceeding the speed of light, of traveling distant stars, and even going back into the past. Mm. Just think, it was about a thousand years ago that the first space flight was made. From Earth to the moon. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, with this rocket cockpit ship, why, we can actually go back into the past. And we could see that flight. We could go right back to Earth, uh, in the middle of the New Mexico desert in the year 1956, and. And we could see the flight. No, 1966. No, no. No, I, uh, I remember my history all right. It was uh, October 23rd, 1956. 66. 56. All right, you two. You can settle this later when you find out how you fly the XRC. All right, Commander. And on my very first trip back into the past, I'm going to go back to Earth to October 23rd, 1956, and I'm going to see that first flight. Commander Corey. Oh, what was his name? Butterfield. All right, we're leaving from duty as a security risk until we can check on him. Corey out. Trouble, Commander? Oh, maybe not. Butterfield, one of the men working on the XRC, was seen talking with a suspected criminal. The security thinks he was selling information about the ship. The man he was seen talking to was Gart Stanger. I'll be on Terra very shortly. You know how to contact me. Gart Stanger, out. Well, Gregory, you heard, they've caught Butterfield. 
If we're going to move in on the XRC, we'll have to move in now. Okay, Happy, now what do you do? Huh? Now I hit the switch that cuts the rockets and turns on the, the magnetic time drive. Touch right. his space phone transmitter. Yes, sir. That's it, Happy. You'd be on your own. Okay. Well, out. Right. It's the last of your training in the rocket cockpit. Well, uh, how did I do, Commander? D did I pass? I'll no, see so you did, but flying colors. Not one error. Hot rockets. Now, now I can do it for real. Now I can really solo in the XRC. Uh, well, that is, I mean, uh, uh, may I, sir? You may, Happy. Uh, pardon me, miss. Would you mind directing me to the easiest way? Oh! Help! Help! It handles just exactly the same way the trainer does. Not a bit of difference. Unless you happen to crash, then I think you'll notice a difference. <laughs> hey, Commander, there's a ship following me. I just now noticed that it's on the same vector. Well, don't get too close to it, Happy. No use taking any chances. It's still a top secret project. And you're flying the only model we've got. Don't worry, Commander. I'm about to go into star drive. I'll pull away from him so fast, he'll think he's going backwards. There's the ship, right on schedule. Just what I think you're going to do about it. That's what Gregory and I were just about to discuss. If you'll excuse us, please. Happy. Happy, this is Carol. Now listen carefully. Carol? I'm in the ship alongside you. Guard Stanger's holding me prisoner. He's going to try to steal the XRC. Get out of here as fast as you can. Go into time drive. Smoking rockets. Happy. Happy, did you read me? That's enough, young lady. That's enough. I knew you'd do that if you were left alone. Okay. Cadet Happy, this is Guard Stanger. You know we have Carol Carlisle. There's only one thing you have to do. Make up your mind which is more important, that rocket cockpit ship you're flying or the girl's life. I've already said it. And don't try to warn the space patrol. We'll be monitoring you. Now, pull alongside, close, and stand by to be boarded. to knock it off itself by the automatic pilot. It won't stay on course. Good. What are you going to do with Happy? The cadet? We'll lead him to fly the XRC. After we drift around in space a while, long enough to make a copy of the new cockpit ship, and then we will make a whole squadron of them. Then Happy? Then we will dispose of the cadet. What would you do? Oh, perhaps cut him adrift to let him drift about in space and time. You won't get away with it. Buzz Corey will find you no matter where you hide. Buzz Corey. <laughs> I can see him now. He'll spend a week looking for the daughter of the Secretary General and the rest of his life searching all space and time for his cadet. Controllers, now you can have all the fun and excitement of flying your very own spaceship. Yes, 
you can get this tremendous rocket cockpit. Will you show the space patrollers how it works, Tony? Sure, Captain Barkley. Fellas and girls, the rocket cockpit is really great. Just like having your own spaceship. Look, these are the time computers. The directions tell you how to fix them for star drive, so you can travel through time. Set these rocket controls and you'll go more than 100,000 miles an hour. Look at all the big planets on this viewscope. See, the names come up automatically. You get master coders to send secret messages, to decode secret messages, to communicate in a language that only space patrollers can know. And here's my favorite, the atom cannons. You load the barrels like this, aim through these sights, and zoom, you fire, and hit every time. You can pretend you're flying along with Commander Corey, or dream up your own adventures, play it alone or with a pal. You can have make-believe wars and everything. Oh, wait a minute, Tony. I want to tell everybody how to get the rocket cockpit. Just send your name and address and 25 cents in coin, along with the lid from a can of Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa or a tracing of the front of the label to Nestle, Box 54, St. Louis, Missouri. And hurry, because you'll need this rocket cockpit to join Commander Corey in all his new adventures and to decode those secret messages. So send your name and address and 25 cents, plus the lid from a can of Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa or a tracing of the front of the label to Nestle, Box 54, St. Louis, Missouri. Gang, send for your rocket cockpit today. And now back to Space Patrol. All right, Cadet. Now operate the controls to take us back into the past. Nothing doing. Go ahead, shoot me, but I'm not playing rocket jockey for you space tramps. You don't seem to understand your position, young man. Either you start this ship going back into the past, or something permanent will happen to the young lady back in our ship. You mean Carol? Oh, all right, stranger. Where in the past do you want me to go? Any place where there aren't a lot of people. Say, uh, how about the middle of a big desert, uh, say on the planet Earth, uh, about a thousand years ago? Whatever you say. Only come on, get started. Okay, okay, we're going. We're going. First the year. The month. And the date. Destination. Earth. There, all set. Well, here we go. Magnetic time drive. The XRC is hurtled through space. The minutes shorten, the hours, the years fall away, the centuries fall away. Back, back into the past. Earth? That's the Earth down there, all right. Sure it is. What'd you expect? Meanwhile, back in the 30th century, the Terra 5 cruises slowly through space. Sorry, Commander. We've had no report from either Cadet Happy or Carol Carlisle. Well, contact me the second you have any word. I'm in space in the approximate area where Happy was soloing. Hurry out. There's no sign of life in it. There were a lot of those little towns out in the desert that were deserted during this time period. Excellent place to hide, eh, Gregory? Oh, wait a minute. What's that? That looks like a little concrete building. What's it doing there? I don't know. What difference does it make? Uh, it's far enough away. Uh, there probably isn't anybody in it anyway. All right. Land. Bring the ship down quietly on repeller ray, close to one of the buildings in that ghost town. Yes, Carol, I 
I've got your position. I'll send a patrol unit to pick you up. Are you going back in the past to find them? Yes, Terra 5 still has a time drive. But how will you know where to look? An educated guess. Stanger didn't know how to operate the rocket cockpit. Perhaps in the very first place he'd go back into the past in the XRC would be to Earth. The New Mexico desert, 1956. Gregory will bring back the supplies that he transferred from our ship when he comes back. When he comes back? Where did he go? Well, I sent him to check on that little concrete building we spotted from the air. I wanted to be sure there's nobody in it. Attention. Good afternoon, Colonel Henderson. Good afternoon. At ease, men. Here are the latest weather reports, Sergeant Novak. Looks like the shot will be right on schedule. Well, the old ghost town won't be with us much longer. Mm, if the wind stays down, that group of ramshackle buildings will be nothing but a radioactive cloud of dust. A split second after four o'clock. Where is the bomb located, sir? Right in the center of the town, in the building that looks like it was a dance hall once. But an atom bomb the size of this one will leave nothing but a big hole in the ground anyway, no matter where they put it. High above the New Mexico desert, an object strange to the people of this era decelerates. Buzz Corey, from the 30th century, has successfully crossed space and time to begin his search over this vast desert wasteland of 20th century Earth. Right here in this ghost town, and they're setting it off at 1600. 1600? But it's only 10 minutes from now. Right. I've got it. Thank you. Well, that's it. Final weather report. The shot goes on schedule. It's now ground zero minus 8 minutes 31 seconds. Now, men, on your toes. We've got to make this good. I just got word that General Long is here with some VIPs from Washington as observers. We can't have any slip ups. <coughs> What do you mean you're leaving me here? Who's going to fly the XRC for you? I'm going to fly it on rockets. I won't try that time track until I, I have more experience with it. Well, hey, wait a minute. You can't do this. You can't leave me here. That bomb's going to go off in a few minutes. Hey, smoking rockets. <laughs> okay, we check. Ground zero. Goes off in seven minutes. Hear that, Sergeant? Sounded like a jet plane. Probably an Air Force observer. That's landing. This time, Stanger, you're not going to get away. Hang on. We're landing. I think we'll be safe to hide out here for a while. Corey? No, it can't be. I can put a cosmic missile in you in a split second if you try to blast off. So just sit tight and listen. I'm landing about 25 yards from you. You and Gregory are to walk over to my ship unarmed. And I'll give you just one minute. All right. All right, Corey. You win. We'll do as you say. Why are you giving in so easy? Who's giving in? You see this? This is a photon bomb. When it explodes, it makes a brilliant light. And when he tries to fly the ship, it'll go off right in his eyes. He won't be able to see his hand in front of his face. You got here too late to save your cadet, Corey. But I doubt if you could make it to that ghost town in time to get him out anyway. Save it, stranger. Okay, suit yourself. But uh, at four o'clock, they're going to throw a switch in that blockhouse. 
and the town is going up in a big cloud, including the old livery barn with your cadet in it. You're too anxious to get me over to that ghost town. Happy must be aboard the XRC. Whatever you say. There's one way to find out. Either way, Corey loses. Ground zero, minus one minute, 30 seconds. Danger was telling the truth. One minute to four. There's no time. The blockhouse. Well, that must be it down there. directly beneath him. He throttles down, cuts rockets, and the ship lowers vertically on repeller ray near his target, a target unseen by his blinded eyes. Count up in 30 seconds, Sergeant. Zero, minus 30 seconds. 29, 28, 27, 26. Sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven. Oh, oh stop! Don't fire that bomb! What's the meaning of this? Who are you? Get out of here! Sorry, there's no time to explain. Sergeant, hit that switch. That's an order. What have you done? What have you done to my men? Maybe, maybe it did happen. Maybe it happened so, so fast that I, that I don't know that I'm not alive. Ow! Oh! Oh, it has to hurt. Oh, I'm all right, all right. I, well, I'm still, al I'm still alive. I'm all right. You'll have to co-pilot. Check out the controls on your side. Paralyzer ray. What kind of a fool do you take me for, anyway? The 30th century, from another planet. The sight's coming back, I can see. Next thing you'll be telling me is you came here in a flying saucer. Well, no, not exactly, but it was a spaceship, and it's right outside. And you're inside, and that's where you're going to stay till I get to the bottom of all this. Now, turn around. Hey, Commander, what are you doing in here? Hey! Don't oh, up! Uh. Hey, what's the matter with all these guys? Uh, paralyzed the raid. They'll soon snap out of it. <sighs> I didn't want to do that to the Colonel, but... Well, maybe it's better that he doesn't see a spaceship just yet. Maybe he'll think this was all just a bad dream. Smoking rockets, Commander. I sure didn't think I was going to stay alive long enough to see you again. What's that? It's Terra 5. Stanger and Gregory must have gotten loose. They're getting away. They won't go far. Until they learn how to operate the time drive, they'll have to stay right here in the 20th century. And don't you worry, sir. We'll catch it. In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure, which will be brought to you by Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa, and famous Nestle's chocolate bars. But first, a word from Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized breakfast cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. Hi, gang. Today's the big Hello, football Captain game. Berkeley. Oh, wow, Tony. Where'd you get all that power, man? That's fun power. I've been charging up with Chex. Checks give you extra power for extra fun. That's right, Tony. 
and space patrollers in each swell tasting checks. You don't get just one power pack grain of wheat or rice, but you get more than 10 grains of power in every checks. And checks even spells fun. C, Christmas. Checks are as crisp as an ice cream cone. H, the happiest taste in cereals ever. E, easy eaten, the size that's just right for a kid's bite. And X, extra fun when you mix rice checks with wheat checks in your breakfast bowl. So, for more fun power, charge up with checks. E, C, D, E, F, G, bite sized checks taste good to me. Bite sized checks. Wheat checks, rice checks. Get your checkerboard cereal today. And now a scene from next week's exciting action. The Space Patrol, the Army, and the Atom Bomb. Commander, Stanger and Gregory, they, they got away. They, they got away in the XR-6. Yes, Happy. And the XRs carrying six missiles. Yeah, but, Commander, they, they're not complete warheads. They can't do much damage. Not in themselves, maybe, but you're forgetting. In the building down the street is an atom bomb. Be sure to see what happens when Buzz and Happy find themselves in the middle of a situation involving the Space Patrol, the Army, and the atom bomb. Next week on Space Patrol. Space Patrol was brought to you by Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa, and famous Nestle's chocolate bar. Remember, N-E-S-T-L-E-S, -E -E Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. Be sure to hear Space Patrol on ABC Radio every Saturday. Consult your newspaper for time and station.